Hello and welcome back everybody to my channel for a little bit more of bits and bobs and surprises. Today's co-host, Cousin It, has decided that he would like to take part in the entirety of this video. So I'm going to be bringing out my little bits and bobs and surprises to my south facing side by the hedge and Cousin It will be next to me also to comfort me. So we have asked each other what's best, good news, bad news. When somebody comes to you and says, do you want the good news first or the bad news first? What do you say? And Cousin It and I kind of agree on this one. We always want to hear the bad news first so that we can end with the good. So that's what we're going to do. And let me show you. If you don't like to see Phalaenopsis SOS, I will let you know when you can look again. Look at that. Guess who this is? This is Phalaenopsis, no ID, but in our home, it's Unicorn. Look at this. When I was doing my flower power video, I told you about a spike I cut off because it was showing signs of scale. All right. I cut that off, I treated the plant, and I was confident she was going to be okay. Clearly, that has not been the case. So a week later, I applied dragon's blood all around the stem, because these leaves yellowed quickly from the stem outwards, and I don't like it when that happens. So I went at it with dragon's blood all around the stem. I don't know if I have a stem problem, but the leaves are telling me there is a huge problem, whatever it is. What am I going to do about it? Because <clears throat> she started off really well, even while the last spike was on, with a new leaf. And I was like, yep, I've got this, I've got this. And then a couple of days later, she started to chuck off the leaves. So I don't have it, clearly. And I am... Um, gobsmacked. What am I going to do about it? At this point, absolutely nothing. I'm leaving her as is. Every time I've lost a fowl in the past, similar things have happened. Now, this is the first time I'm losing a fowl because of something going on in the stem. First time. The other times it's always been not adapting to the leka, And then I'd have root rot and promptly it would become an immediate rescue. However, every time I've touched a fowl that was in distress, I've also noticed that it gets worse faster. Not giving the fowl to decide, I've got a huge problem, I'm going to do something about it, like maybe shoot out a keiki or grow roots while still attached. So that's what I'm not going to do. I'm just going to leave her in the pot, pretend none of this is happening except <laughs> monitoring the stem. And fingers, fingers crossed, fingers crossed, I don't lose her. Anything above this stem right here is still looking quite okay. So I'm not sure if I'm, you know, false hopes here. But I'm going to hold on to everything I can in order to make sure that I can somehow save this fowl. And she doesn't go the same way as my others. Incredible. Disappointed disappointed beyond beyond belief I can tell you beyond belief so sad that is the bad news all right okay I'll tell them right now cousin it wants me to say that it's okay to look now if you don't like to see phalaenopsis in distress so that section is over and we move on to Cygnotus red wine delight supposedly I have never shown this in uh, my videos so far because it wasn't doing anything. I got this from Olympus 1975 on eBay. His plants are fabulous, but they have very, very fantastical names. So this is Cygnotis Red Wine Delight Goliath, named Goliath. And it went downhill super quickly the moment I got it. 
and it's been living in this Ceramis semi-hydro pot low down, low down for over a year now doing nothing. But now we have a little growth coming. So I am very surprised, happily surprised, and I'm going to see what it now does because clearly now I have, well, when the roots come, I will have to address its setup. If this is a Signoches Red Wine Delight, then I don't know what the other one is that I got from the Orchid Room, but I do trust her more than I trust Olympus 1975 because his names are as nice as they sound, not exactly what is in the books or what one can find on the internet. But anyway, a new growth. So that is something I'm looking forward to. This is exciting, isn't it? All right, cousin it, don't get your little bushels in a twist there. This is exciting, I know it is. So let's just show them, okay? Yes, there's not much to see right now, but this is my Maxima, my Cattleya Maxima. I will never be without this orchid. I don't just love her, but she has anything Max, Maxima, like Maxillaria, anything like that. It's just, it gives me goosebumps to say it, okay? So trust me when I tell you that huh, we still don't have any action in the sheath, but she doesn't do that. Let me say, he doesn't do that. He blooms around September, October and can be sitting there with a dried out sheath for quite some time. Last year I had two growths, you can see. This one bloomed and this one bloomed and I entered it into the GVOS. All right, now it lives in my prime real estate location. Bloom or not, it's there. I have to see him all the time. But look, you guys. I knew I was getting one more growth because that is what he does. He matures a new growth during the late winter, early spring, and it's mature by the summer and then gets a sheath. So I waited for another growth to start and it was taking forever. But hey, look, I have one, I, two. There's two more new growths coming this season and I just, ah, if I still could, I would do cartwheels around the yard. This is just, Oh, yes, two new growths, whereas I was anticipating one more so that I would have two blooms, two growths blooming at the same time like I did last year. But if he is doing this, I have got to keep that feed level going to be able to make all three bloom. Oh, this is exciting. If you've been watching since the beginning, I've showed you my one of my cat Leo, Leopoldi eyes that I wasn't too sure about. So I have a second one, very, very early days in my channel. I showed you my cat Leo, Leopoldi eye that I wasn't too sure about. It's going to make it. Now this is a seedling clearly. And then I bought a third one. So now I have three because there's two pieces in here. And then I did a little bits and bobs and surprises. And I said, I think it's going to grow two new growths because I was always dubious about this piece right here, that it was just gonna keel over, judging by the leaves. It started to push out a little root, which is going down into the pot, and then I noticed growth. And I'm like, hey now, and I can confirm two new growths. And they are drawing quite a lot of substance from the other part of the plant. There's not many suitable structures that are juicy and plump because this is not the kind of cattleya, so they're very, very hard to get going. So I'm watching these two new growths like a hawk because my third piece isn't doing anything. But this is awesome. I am so pleased. They're very slow in progress, but now that they've broken, like shown green, I'm sure it'll go much quicker. But needless to say, the one piece that I thought was gonna be strong enough to do something is very much further behind, but it's doing something. Let's see if I can, there we go, there it is. There is a new growth as well. So there we are. Oh my goodness, this is great news. I am so pleased, there it is. I'm so pleased about this. 
Now I've kept it away from areas where maybe a drop of water or some spray can fall on it. But it is now in very bright shade and it's facing away from the light. You can see I don't want the growths coming over the pot this way. So this is how it's currently standing in the prime real estate location where I can keep a close eye on it. And the growths are growing into the direction of the light. I have to watch what I'm going to do with this one. I don't want these to be, you know, unruly and a problem when I put them on the shelf in the winter. But great news, Leopoldii. Two new growths, one new growth. That's fantastic. Lynn Brooks and Anne Broder. Guess who this is and what it's doing. Yep, it is time. It is my Encyclia Garciana and I am now doing your suggested plate method, soaking it instead of spraying it all day long. In order to avoid more of these crinkly leaves that are coming up and making it difficult for it to bloom. I already had some buds that didn't make it through because it couldn't come through the sheath. And I think I see somewhere else it's going to have difficulties and that has got to stop. So here I have more sheaths coming. She still has the blooms up here from before. Let me see if I can just remove it carefully because now by doing this, I'm only hanging her up at night. So I, I leave her now soaking all day long in that little plate. It has sometimes fertilized water and sometimes just plain RO water in it. But these other blooms still doing their beautiful thing. Oh yes, and here in the back, maybe I can hang her and show you. Here in the back you can see how the blooms are struggling. They won't come out. They won't form properly now, which is a shame, but I'm going to try and avoid that. So for the next six weeks, at least, depending on how hot the weather is, Encyclia Garciana Alba, in my case, is now in your subscriber-inspired method of lying it on a plate, just like this. This is amazing. And I'm leaving her down here in the shade for most of the day. And then at night, I hang her up onto the place where she belongs. It's a lot of root disturbance. I may lose some of the growing tips because I'm lifting and moving and doing all that, but it will hydrate the plant and I'm very happy about that. The roots have gone absolutely nuts since we saw her last. Some were poking out of the sphagnum moss, but you can see now it's just total, total root happiness. What I'm trying to see now, based on how I'm going to have her positioned, I want any new growth to come out at this point, see if I can correct her growing habit to be a little bit more upright because it'll help me when it comes time to change her setup from being on a mount. One of these days I'm going to have to do it and then I can maybe split her, I can share her and then at least get some growth that are not so packed in as you can see from a mounted perspective but a bit more upright to help with any kind of transition into a new setup. This is gold. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Lynn. What is going on here, cousin it? Huh? Why are you laughing? Oh, come on, you have to admit, she's cute. She is so cute. Let's show them what she's doing. What, what, what's her name? Oh, Podanges Dactyloteras. That's her name. I know, you haven't seen her. Let's show her. Isn't that the cutest little thing? Now, look at that poking out from the left and the right. My Podangus has two spikes. Oh, this is good news. This is good news. First time that this would bloom for me if I can make it happen. It's very hot and I'm sure she needs a lot of humidity. So I'm very cautious now about how I water her, only through the pot and let it rise up and never touch the spikes. But this 
would be the first time bloom of my Podangus and I'm so happy to see that it's at least trying. Fingers crossed that we actually see them, but we have gotten to the next level of size on the Podangus. What are you on about, Cousin It? Seriously? She's tiny? Of course she's tiny. Not everybody has to be as big and blousy as you. You know, <laughs> in this case, size isn't everything. Oh, it is. Oh, really? No, it's not. Size isn't everything. So, on that bombshell and revelation, thank you everybody so very much for watching. Yes, Cousin It, that's it for now. I think you've overstepped your mark a little bit. We'll see how you get along. We both have to practice this YouTube thing, but we'll bring you back into the picture. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. You're fine. Thank you everybody so much for watching. From Cousin It and me, have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye.